Welcome to Calm in Action. My name is Michael Haig, a technical marketing engineer at Nutanix. Today we're going to cover the architecture of a Calm DSL blueprint. So in a previous video, we generated this blueprint via Calm init blueprint command from the CLI. And so today we're going to cover this file line by line. So let's get started. At the top here, we see a large comment. The first part is talking about the folder structure of the blueprint. So the first thing we see is a dot local folder. Uh, this is hidden from source control management, and this is storing our secrets. So in this case, a private and a public SSH key. Next, we see our blueprint Python file, which is the file we're viewing right now. And then lastly, we have a separate folder storing any of our scripts. So in this case, we see a package install and uninstall uh, scripts, but these could be a service create action or a custom profile action script. And if you're unsure of any of the terminology that I'm talking about today, I do recommend you head over to the doc section of the Calm DSL, where we cover all of the exact terminology in these Calm blueprints. So the rest of the comment here has a high level overview on what this particular blueprint is deploying. It also talks about the order of execution. I'm not gonna get into that today, but again, uh, it's here for your reference and it's also covered in that documentation I just mentioned. And then lastly, common uh, Calm CLI commands that you may wanna run. So now we're gonna get into the architecture of the actual blueprint. I'm gonna refer to this particular image several times uh, throughout the video today. And so I'll be going back and forth. Before we do that, though, let's talk about the first couple of sections on this particular blueprint. We see at the top we have all of our import statements. So this is pulling in all of the Calm specific uh, libraries. So next up, we have our SSH credentials. This is essentially reading in from that .local directory I mentioned earlier. And then we have our OS image details. In this case, we're pointing at a downloadable image from download.nutanix.com. Alternatively, you can point it at a local Prism Central owned image. Next up, we have our class hello service that's overriding our base class service. So if we go over to our diagram here, we're gonna start diving in. Essentially, this diagram is a little more complex than our example blueprint, since we have two services, a database service and a web service. And then we also have two app profiles, uh, AHV and AWS down here at the bottom. In our example blueprint, we essentially just have a single service and a single app profile. So I'll talk about the more complex nature of blueprints in a little bit, uh, but for now, essentially focus on along the left-hand side here. So we have our service, and under our service, we have service variables, any dependencies. Uh, so for instance, uh, perhaps the web service is dependent upon the database service, and then any service action definitions. So if we go back to our example blueprint, we see we have our variable here. Uh, since it's just a single service, we don't have any dependencies. And then we see our service actions. So we have both our system defined service actions. So create, start, stop, delete. And additionally, if you wanna define any custom service actions, that's possible as well. We see here we have custom action one and two, and we're actually defining the script right in this blueprint Python file. So if it's a real short script, that's definitely an option. If it's a longer script, I'd recommend putting it in its separate uh, script file like we saw for those package install and uninstall scripts earlier. So next up, we have the class hello package that's overriding our base package class. We see, if we go over to the diagram here, we have our package and we have a service reference. So it's pointing to our service above and then also any package install or uninstall definitions or any variables as well. So we see here, we have our service reference, our hello service, and we have a package variable right here. And then finally, we have our install and uninstall definitions. And this time, as I mentioned, we're pointing at uh, scripts that are located outside of this blueprint uh, Python file. So next up is around the provider spec. Uh, so we have two classes here, uh, MyHV VM resources and MyHV VM. It's essentially defining uh, the provider info for our substrates. So we see at our bottom here, we have our MyHV VM substrate. Going over to our diagram, under the substrate section, we have our provider info, essentially those two other classes, and then any readiness probe as far as when we can connect to that VM. 
and any pre-create or post-delete definitions will all be stored under the substrate definition. So we see here our provider spec and provider type, and then our pre-create and post-delete actions are defined as well. So we're getting towards the end of the blueprints. Uh, next we have our deployment. Essentially deployment is defining a package and a substrate, a combination thereof. Uh, so we see here in this particular deployment, we have our AHV DB deployment. It's referencing the substrate above it and then also the package, which then references that service. And here we see package and substrate. So next we have our application profile. Again, we see down here, we have this profile, this particular AHV profile. We'll reference any deployments we have, any profile variables, and then any profile actions as well. So here we see our single deployment, our profile variables, and then our custom profile actions. And you don't have to manually define uh, the system defined profile actions. They'll be present no matter what. And then tying everything together is our final base class, our Hello Blueprint that's overriding our Blueprint class. And it's adding in essentially all of those items we've talked about so far, credentials, services, packages, substrates, and profiles. So that's all there is to this simple Calm DSL Blueprint. Now you certainly can get more complex, however. So we mentioned here in this diagram, we have an AHV profile and an AWS profile. That allows the end user at launch to choose whether they want to deploy this onto AHV or AWS. When you do that, you obviously have to create additional deployments as represented via the orange outline here and also substrates. However, the base services and packages are used by both app profiles. So we'll talk about more complex use cases like this in upcoming videos. Thanks for your time today.